Hey everybody, how are you? Welcome back to art class. So this week we are going to keep working with color and we are going to keep uh, working with like winter themed art projects. And uh, to do that, we're going to make some winter landscapes. We'll talk more about the landscape part of this in a minute, but first we're going to talk about contrast. So we've talked about contrast in art before. Um, I'm sure you've talked about contrast in your homeroom class before. So, uh, usually we hear it in school when we are comparing and contrasting two different things. And we know that when we're comparing, we're, we're finding similarities. And when we are contrasting, we're finding differences. Well, in, in art, more often than not, that's, that's what contrast is. It's differences. Um, and a lot of times in artwork, those contrasts are, are very different. We're, we're talking opposites, almost. Um, so in art, we can have contrasting colors. We can have contrasting shapes. We can even have contrasting types of lines. There's all kinds of different ways that we uh, show contrast in our artwork. Um, the main reason that artists show contrast is to show emphasis, which we've, we've talked about. Emphasis is the most important part of your artwork. So if you want to focus on, on one point and you wanted to use color to do it with contrast, um, you might have something like this. If you wanted to focus on one point and you wanted to use uh, size, as your your contrast you might do something like this so this is just a couple a couple of ways that artists can use contrast but the the important part is contrasts in art are very often uh, opposites but they're always going to be something something different so the contrast that we're using specifically today is going to be with color and then no color so we're not talking bright and dark we're talking color and black and white. That's gonna be our, our contrast. Um, our project is, is based on the artwork of an artist named Jen Arani. Uh, Jen Arani is a, an artist that's making art, like right now. Um, a lot of the artists we talk about in school are from hundreds of years ago. Well, this is someone that is currently making art. She's a, an illustrator, she's an artist, she's a designer, and she makes stuff that looks like this. Uh, a lot of her uh, artwork focuses on the skies that she calls galaxies. And you can see the contrast, right? It's pretty, pretty evident. Um, the foreground, whether it is a nature scene like this one, uh, an urban scene with some houses like this one. The foreground in her artwork is almost always just a black and white drawing. And then the background, the sky, the galaxy, as she's calling it, um, is made up of colors. Now, hers uh, is watercolor paint, so her colors can blend a little bit different than ours will, um, because for our thing, we're going to use crayons. But like we said, our, our projects are going to be based on her uh, artwork, her paintings. All right, so last thing uh, to talk about before we get started, hopefully you watched the video before this one that talked all about the, the auroras, the northern lights, um, because that is something that if you choose to, you, you can include into your winter landscape sky. Um, so a lot of the colors that we're thinking of for our uh, skies will kind of be more towards the cool colors. Uh, purples and, and greens and maybe even dark blues, uh, some pinks, things like that. Um, but then also, like we said, if you choose to, uh, you'll probably want to throw some greens and yellows and stuff like that in there for your auroras. So we'll talk about that in a minute, but for now, let's get started drawing. All right, everybody. So we are going to need some paper, some crayons, a pencil and a sharpie would be helpful today if you have one and you're gonna need something to help you make a circle uh, because instead of taking up our whole page we're gonna kind of frame our 
our drawing in just, just one, one little section. So that's actually the first thing that I am gonna do. Um, remember, please start with your pencil. I'm gonna start with a Sharpie just so you can see a little bit better. All right, so there is my circle. All right, so we are making a winter landscape and it's gonna be based on that artist, uh, Jen Arani, that we looked at. So we know, if we're basing it on hers, that a lot of our contrast is gonna be the difference between our sky, which will be up here, and our, our earth, our land, which will be down here. So I'm gonna use some mountains and that's gonna be kind of the dividing point that's gonna be my, my horizon. So when we think about mountains, they are bumpy. They are not as flat as we think of them all the time. So we don't need flat lines. We need some bumpy lines. I am going to add some, some shadow in here. And the way I'm gonna do that is gonna be maybe a little different than we have in other things. I'm gonna pick the whole area that I want to be darker and I'm gonna turn that into its own, its own shape. Another one right there, like that. I'm just gonna leave those kind of blank for now. We'll, we'll deal with that in a minute. So now I'm gonna go ahead and finish the rest of my middle ground and foreground. I'm just gonna add a couple of lines to represent some different layers of like hills. All right, so there's more details I'm gonna put in that in a second, but I'm gonna go ahead and start on my sky. So we're basing these on uh, Jen uh, Arani's paintings, but also, you know, what the sky actually looks like, um, especially uh, in those areas where we see those, those northern lights, those aurora borealis. So I'm gonna use um, a couple different shades of purple, some blue, and then I'm gonna get uh, kind of a light, lightish green to use for my, my actual northern lights. So I'm gonna start up near the top with my purple, and I'm gonna color darker at the top, and then as I bring this down, I'll, I'll go lighter. And remember we talked about uh, when we were doing the pumpkins, the way that we, we blend our colors when we're using crayons, pressure has a lot to do with it, and drawing over the top of other colors is how that works as well. So where I want it to be the darkest, I'm gonna press the hardest. Where I want it to be lighter, I'm just gonna barely, barely make a mark. And kind of like we did with those pumpkins, I'll go back at, uh, at some point here and kind of smooth things out together once I've got my main areas. All right, so I'm starting at the top. You'll notice I'm not making like a line. I don't want it to look like here's my purple and then there's my red and then there's my next color. I want these to all kind of fade together. And I'm also gonna leave some space for my, for my green, for my uh, northern lights, my auroras. So I'm gonna keep going down, filling in some more areas, leaving some space open for those northern lights. So when you think about those, they're also not really a straight line, right? Those are kind of curved. Those almost kind of snake their way through the sky. So I kind of want to make sure I'm thinking about the shape that they would actually be in when I'm leaving the space for them to, to take up. All right, 
I'm going to use some blue as I get closer down to my mountains. So now I've left a pretty good space here and a smaller one there. That's where I'm going to add in my green color, my light green. And you don't have to fill all the space you made because remember you're trying to trying to mimic the actual shape that those auroras would take. Now I can go back in and start blending some colors together even better. All right, so I feel pretty good about, about how my sky looks. Now I'm gonna finish up some details down here. Um, remember for our darker areas that we wanted our shadows, we, we left those blank and I don't wanna color those all the way in with my marker um, because that wouldn't necessarily uh, come off looking like a shadow. Um, since this is you know kind of a illustration style, I am gonna make straight lines to fill up these shadow shadow shapes, these shadow areas. And I'm gonna do that in each one of those that I made. Since we're only using white and black on our middle ground and foreground, and I guess even some of our background with our mountains, we're gonna kinda overlap differently than we normally would. Usually we would leave some space, like if I wanted a tree here, like I would leave some space. Well, since we're using black, I can color just right over the top of whatever it is I'm trying to do. All right, so there's my, my kind of shadows. I'm gonna go in and add just a few more details with my marker, or if you don't have a Sharpie, a black crayon would work great for this step here. All right, so now last, last step I'm gonna do, I'm gonna add some trees since this is my foreground and it would be bigger, I can make them kind of big if I want them to look like they're up here. So I'm gonna start with just a line for the trunk and then I am gonna use some lines to go out from it. For all my branches. Think about a, a pine tree, the kind of tree that we would see in this kind of an environment. They've got that nice, almost triangular shape about them. I'll do a couple little guys way back there in the distance. All right. So I think I'm good. All right, now remember, the whole, the whole goal of this is to show contrast. And I think, I think we've done a good job. We've got this real bright, colorful sky, um, just completely full of colors. And then we've got this uh, equally bright, we could say, but you know, zero colors, this nice black and white landscape down, down beneath it. So, this, we, we said that we use uh, contrast to show, show emphasis. There's almost two points of emphasis on, on a drawing like this, right? Because 
this grabs your eye, but then this also grabs your eye. So when we've got uh, two points of emphasis that are kind of equally important, well, that's called balance. So you've made a well-balanced artwork if, if that's what you're going for. All right, my friends, uh, have fun with this. I can't wait to see everybody's. Hope you're all doing well. See you guys later. Bye.